Hi, it's Alex from VCharged, and this is Plug and Play, an educational series about EV charging. Whether you've been charging for a while or you're brand new to this, we could all use a little bit of help sometimes. So let's get into it. So you've just got your brand new EV and you've got a new charger. Great, but now you've got to worry about how you actually plug it in. Now the majority of EVs actually come with a cable, but it is important to understand the difference between them if you are looking to buy your own. Alternatively, just to double check they've given you the right one with the vehicle. So our prop for today comes from ZEV, a British company making cables in the UK. A few different types of cable. The first thing to understand is that these are all rated around the power that is actually allowed to be transmitted to the vehicle from the charger. Um, not to go into too much detail, but each of these pins here represents a function of the charger and of confirming with the vehicle what you're sending through it. You've got a proximity pilot pin that sets the current limitation and confirms that it is plugged into the charger. The control pilot signal, which is basically the closest to communication between the charger and the vehicle that you get directly wired in. And then you've got live, neutral and protective earth, same as you have for a three pin plug at home. And then for three phase charging cables, you also have two additional live phases. So three phase, what's that? Well, firstly, let's touch on what you can have for a home charger. Typically homes in the UK have single phase power. It limits you to a maximum of seven kilowatt and that's 32 amps. But if you were looking at three phase power, it's up to three times the charging speed on vehicles that can charge at 22 kilowatts. And it's again 32 amps, but it's three live phases, so three times the power. So why is all of that detail important? Well, it's important because that proximity pilot will set the amount of power that you can actually send through a cable. So if that's limited from 32, say to 20 amp, you'll only be able to charge at 20 amp, regardless of what your charge can output and what your car can take. It's also important because if you buy a cable without the additional live phases, you won't be able to use it on a three phase charger. Now, if you have a three phase cable, it will still work on your home charger at seven kilowatt, but the vice versa isn't actually true. You can't use a single phase cable to charge at 22 kilowatt. So if you're thinking you're gonna be charging a lot more in public than at home, it is relevant to actually buy a three phase cable. And what you're looking for there is three phase, 32 amp and then on top of that you're going to look at the length of the cable which is the other variable so you can either have coiled or straight coiled being a little bit more convenient for packing away straight being a little bit cleaner when it hangs off the vehicle because it won't hang tight so if you're looking to predominantly charge at home and you're going to be leaving the cable at home or alternatively just putting it in your boot to take away uh, you're going to want a single phase charging cable still 32 amp and then you pick the length color configuration yourself one important thing to note that we haven't touched on is connector type. Now, obviously cables work with untethered chargers. An untethered charger is essentially a socket and the charger and you provide the cable yourself or the one that comes with the vehicle. Those connector types come in two different types. That's type one and type two, rather conveniently. Type one is for some of the older models, but also say Chinese, Japanese cars um, with legacy connectors. And type two is the most common connector type in Europe and quickly becoming the standard. This is a type two and type one looks slightly different. You can see it on screen there. Now that's important because all of the chargers or predominantly the chargers you're going to buy and I use at home in the UK are going to be type two at the charger side. But if you have a type one vehicle, you're gonna buy a cable that is type one to type two. That means type one goes into the vehicle, type two goes into the charger and suddenly you're compatible. So what you'll see when you're on charging websites, companies like evcables.com are fantastic for this because they give you a broad range. You can configure your lengths and you can go and look at what type of cable you're getting as well as a lot of education around which one you should have. At the start, you'll see the type one to type one, type two to type two, type one to type two, or T1 slash T2, T2 slash T2. And that terminology is which connector is at either end. In the UK and around Europe, it's gonna very much be type two to type two as the standard, but it is always worth checking what's on your vehicle side. So once you've got the basics out of the way, as you say, at home, type two to type two most likely, 32 amps charge at the full rate, and out in public, three phase, type two to type two, 
probably going to see you're right. The next thing we look at is colors and configurables. The most important one that you would think is length. Essentially, how far is your charger going to be away from where you can reliably park the car? Now, obviously, with a coiled cable, it's going to hang a lot tighter, so you're going to need to get that length very, very correct. For longer cables, it's important to know that conventionally we would take one meter drop at the charger and probably one meter drop at the car to take your calculation. So if you've got a five meter cable, probably best to be parked within three meters of the charger. So take that two meter drop and you comfortably charge. So you buy a seven and a half meter, 10 meter cable. As long as you're within two meters of parking within that length, you're probably going to be all right. That's important as well, because essentially keeping a cable taut within your connector gives you very little tolerance if someone trips over it or you're walking back, or alternatively, it's just tight against the connector or the charger constantly. They're gonna be pulling against each other and it's just poor management really. So the second thing is the color of the cable. Something that you might not think about, and I certainly didn't coming into the industry. And it's so much more than having something that looks nice on your wall or in the boot of your car. This cable, designed by ZEV in collaboration with the Institute for the Blind, actually is a lime green colour that's designed to have maximum contrast in the multitude of environments. So whether that be on grass or whether it be against pavement, brick, it's designed to stand out. Now that's important when you have the tripping hazard for people or it's something that's going to be trailing along the floor near your vehicle. Other options will include bright blue, you'll also get conventional black, and one that comes through quite a lot is grey, something that blends in a little bit more with concrete. So now we've touched on that and basically all the functional things you will need to select a cable and how they can limit your charging at home. Remember, if it's not rated to anything above the 20 amps or 16 amps, it's not going to charge any higher than that. You want a 32 amp cable to get the most out of a 7.4 kilowatt home charger. The last thing I want to touch on very briefly is charging cable etiquette and it also makes sense as to why you really need to get the right cable for you up front. What we've seen and what a lot of people see is what we call daisy chaining. Now daisy chaining is poor for a number of reasons. Mostly it's not how cables are designed to be used and it's certainly not safe. Daisy chaining is where you buy the wrong length cable and suddenly you want to buy another cable to fit to it to plug in at either end. Now, this can be done, but one thing that's important about cables is that right at the top here, you can see there's a little gap cut out. And this is where the locking pin on your car and the locking pin on the charger drive into the cable to make sure it stays in place. So no one can come and pull it out, nuisance tripping basically taking away your charge. But secondly, so that you can't pull this out midway through a high power charge, causing arcing, potentially damage to the socket and connector, certainly damage to the cable, and over the lifetime compromising the safety of the whole process. When you daisy chain chargers, there is no locking pin between the two of them, which means anyone can unplug it, they're not mechanically bound, they're not very tolerant, which means that they can easily disconnect, both ends would then be exposed to the elements as they're not in their correct seal on the socket, and it's really bad practice all round. So get the right cable for you first time round, and don't try and fix it after the fact. This has been Plug and Play with Vcharged, I'm Alex, if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to see, any video content we should cover or any questions about this one, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll catch you in the next one.